The first major redesign for the Kawasaki Ultra 160 in 16 years has hit the water. This is Kawasaki's top-of-the-line non-supercharged model and brings the iconic brand closer to rivals such as the Sea-Doo GTX 170 and Yamaha FXHO. While the Kawasaki Ultra Hull remains unchanged from the previous generation launched in 2007, the top deck is all new and is the same as the flagship Kawasaki Ultra 310 supercharged model. The other big news, Kawasaki has doubled down on this important segment of the jet ski market, going from just one version of the Ultra 160 to two models, the LXS and the top of the range LX. And with one more on the way, such as the Kawasaki Ultra 160 Angler Fishing Jet Ski, due in 2025. In the meantime, let's unpack what we have here, the 2024 Kawasaki Ultra 160 LX. In this video, we will cover Australian and US pricing, go through all the key features, tell you what it's like to ride, and do acceleration at top speed tests using precision V-Box timing equipment. Let's get started. The new Kawasaki Ultra 160 was unveiled in early 2023 and started arriving in showrooms in late 2023 and early 2024. It fills an important gap in the Kawasaki jet ski lineup, which starts with the mid-size STX 160, which sits below this model, and tops out with the supercharged Kawasaki Ultra 310, which sits above this model. What we are testing here is the 2024 Kawasaki Ultra 160 LX, the most luxurious version of Kawasaki's non-supercharged lineup. This full-size three-seater sit-down jet ski is powered by a 160 horsepower, 1.5 litre four-cylinder engine. Its main rivals are the Sea-Doo GTX 170, which has a 1630cc three-cylinder engine with 170 horsepower, and the updated Yamaha FXHO with a new 1.9-litre four-cylinder engine with an estimated 200 horsepower. Prices for the Kawasaki Ultra 160 range are as follows. In the US, the Kawasaki Ultra 160 LXS costs from $17,199, excluding additional costs such as trailer and registration, while the top of the range Ultra 160 LX is listed at $18,199 in the US, ski only. In Australia, the Ultra 160 LXS costs from $24,848, excluding additional costs such as trailer and registration, while the top of the range Ultra 160 LX is listed at $26,248 in Australia, ski only. These prices are close to 50% dearer than the previous Ultra model, which bowed out in 2022. And these new prices make the Ultra 160 close to or slightly dearer than the Sea-Doo GTX 170 and in round numbers, $1 to $2,000 less than the Yamaha FXHO. It's worth noting the latest Ultra 160 has a heap of new technology and way more features than ever before. Here are the technical details for Australian customers. Here are the technical details for US customers. Before we get into acceleration times and top speed, let's recap the key highlights. This is the first completely new top deck in 16 years for the non-supercharged Kawasaki Ultra Jet Ski Series. It has a reverse trigger for the first time on a non-supercharged Kawasaki, Although it's worth pointing out, it is different from Yamaha and Sea-Doo setups because on the Kawasaki, the reverse trigger is on the right handlebar, activated by using your right thumb, while your fingertips are used for forward acceleration. It seems more complicated than it really is, but it works really well once you have time to get familiar with it. There is adjustable trim for the first time on a non-supercharged Kawasaki to bring the nose up or down depending on conditions and fuel load. Launch control for the first time on a non-supercharged Kawasaki.
a GPS based speedometer, daytime running lights, a rear view camera, multiple power modes, cruise control and no wake modes, extra bars on the handlebars to mount a phone holder, action camera or navigation unit, a 7 inch digital display screen, smartphone connectivity, an infotainment controller dial, a trip computer with a compass, water temperature and ambient temperature, and the side fairings are now storage pods in addition to the bow storage. There's also a USB charge port and waterproof storage pocket in the right front fairing. and an 80 litre fuel tank, the filler for which is hidden away from water spray under the bow storage cover. Both Ultra 160 models come with a new rear deck extension similar to those offered by Sudo and Yamaha, so owners can fit a broad range of accessories such as a cooler box or fishing gear. Unique to the Ultra 160 LX in addition to the features previously mentioned include 5 way height adjustable handlebars, four speaker audio, height adjustable and tiered seating, and a small wind deflector. So what's it like to ride? The riding position is slightly lower in the Kawasaki than it is in the sea or Yamaha, especially since Kawasaki has lowered the centre of gravity by a couple of inches with this new model. 
This layout, as well as the heavy duty hull, the Kawasaki Ultra is the heaviest in its segment, means the Ultra is an absolute beast in rough chop. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we can see why Kawasaki has left the Ultra hull exactly as it is. It feels incredibly stable, particularly compared to say a sea GTX 170 or Fish Pro. Only the Yamaha FX comes close to carving through water like this. However, if you ride standing up, you might find the handlebars are set too low, even in their highest position, and it can be hard to get comfortable. The other thing we noticed, the Ultra 160 is thirsty. The 1.5 litre four cylinder engine, the smallest among its direct rivals, works pretty hard moving all that weight. At 437 kilograms or 963 pounds, the Ultra 160 is about 50 kilograms or 110 pounds heavier than the Sea GTX 170 and Yamaha FXHO. On test, the Kawasaki Ultra 160 LX used fuel at a rate of 52 litres per 100 kilometres or 4.5 miles per gallon. That makes it about 10% thirstier than the Sea GTX 170 or Fish Pro 170 in our testing. Line ball with the previous 1.8 litre non supercharged Yamaha FXHO and about 5% more efficient than the new 1.9 litre non-supercharged Yamaha FXHO. Having the least power in the heaviest jet ski among its peers delivers a predictable result in performance testing. The figures show the Ultra 160 with launch mode engaged hit 40 km an hour or 25 miles per hour in 1.95 seconds, a fraction slower than its non-supercharged Sidu and Yamaha rivals. Top speed after an average of four runs was 84.5 km an hour or 52.5 miles per hour. In comparison, the Sea-Doo GTX 170 can nudge almost 90 km an hour or 56 miles per hour, and the 1.9 litre Yamaha FXHO can nudge almost 100 km an hour or 62 miles per hour. Here are the acceleration numbers in km an hour. Here are the acceleration numbers in miles per hour. As always, our acceleration times are an average of four runs, two in each direction, in this instance with a rider weighing 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. We tested in flat water conditions rather than ocean chop to ensure we could extract the best performance. Wind speed, wind direction, air temperature and the water current can all affect the results which is why we took an average of two directions rather than taking advantage of a tailwind or a favourable current. The ambient temperature on the day was a mild 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We used launch control for each run as it initially keeps the nose down so the jet pump gets maximum traction at the start and then the trim automatically adjusts to bring the nose up as the speed climbs so there is less resistance at higher speeds. Our V-Box timing equipment was programmed to start from 5 km an hour or 3 miles per hour rather than zero because the slightest movement triggers the device. Results will vary depending on rider weight, fuel load and water conditions, but this is what we got on the day, taking an average of 4 runs in 2 directions. Here's how the 2024 Kawasaki Ultra 160LX compares to some other full-size 3-seater non-supercharged jet skis based on our own V-Box testing. We've used the data for 80 km an hour or 50 miles per hour as the benchmark for this comparison because the Kawasaki can't quite hit 90 km an hour or 56 miles per hour. While the Kawasaki's numbers might not appeal to thrill seekers, in our opinion they don't tell the full story. The Kawasaki Ultra still feels fast and besides, most jet ski riders rarely get close to 80 km an hour or 50 miles per hour anyway. Most leisure riding is about half this speed. Plus, this is an incredibly stable craft to manoeuvre. We're a massive fan of the new reverse trigger and the Kawasaki's extra technology. Believe it or not, the rear camera works really well. We initially thought it was a gimmick, but it will no doubt prove handy to give the operator a pair of eyes in the back of their head. You can quickly glance at the screen while still looking ahead, rather than turning around to see what's going on behind you. In Australia, any jet ski towing someone on a tube or a wakeboard must have a rear-facing observer. The camera does not eliminate that legal responsibility. The camera is designed to simply be an additional pair of eyes, not the primary observer. The other thing we love about the new Kawasaki Ultra series are the daytime running lights. 
It's important to note these do not replace navigation lights for night riding in jurisdictions that allow jet skis at night. Instead, they are designed to help other vessels more easily spot oncoming jet skis from a distance during the day. While it might seem like a gimmick, we're a fan of these lights and we hope sea and Yamaha do the same on their future models. Dislikes? There aren't that many. The bow storage opening is much smaller than before, so it's hard to fit bulky items. The digital display is not a touch screen like the Yamaha, so you need to use the dial and buttons. And we reckon some riders might welcome a bit more power. This 160 horsepower engine has been around for a while now, and it's the same unit fitted to the smaller Kawasaki STX 160. Hopefully, now that Kawasaki has got the top deck bang up to date and fitted a heap of new technology, its next big engineering investment will be in the engine department. To sum up, the Kawasaki Ultra 160 is an awesome machine and would definitely suit first timers or experienced riders who want a stable craft that can handle rough conditions while not missing out on creature comforts. We are glad Kawasaki is not only back in the game with this massively overhauled Ultra 160, but it has doubled down with two models with other variants on the way. Watercraft Zone would like to extend a huge thanks to Kawasaki Australia who loaned us the Ultra 160 LX demonstrator model to test over two weekends in early 2024. As always, to read the full review and check out the latest jet ski news, head over to watercraftzone.com.au. Please hit like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel so we can grow our jet ski community and to make sure you don't miss any future updates. Thanks for watching.